I'm Mohamed M. Carlos, and you're watching News at 10. Well, making the headlines tonight, roads diverge as rallies banned in capital for seven days. Well, food traders can raise prices without profiteering. Well, Malaysia is proposing to adopt the Kuala Lumpur Joint Statement on Tiger Conservation to recover and boost tiger population in potential tiger habitats within Southeast Asia. The Prime Minister, Dato Sri Ismail Sabri Yaakov, said the 13-point joint statement would support implementation of actions within the Southeast Asia Tiger Recovery Action Plan, or known as TRAP, based on agreed priorities. The adoption of the Kuala Lumpur Joint Salmon, Strap and Resource Mobilization Strategy will provide Tiger Range countries a means to set realistic, actionable targets in their bid to achieve Tiger Recovery Goals. The Premier said this when officiating at the 4th Asia Ministerial Conference, or AMC4, on tiger conservation held virtually today. Dr. Sri Ismail Sabri also called on the tiger range countries to partners to work together in the spirit of a world family to save the species as the loss of tigers knows no geographical, cultural and political boundaries. Meanwhile, the Premier said the financial resource mobilization assessment was to be further deliberated on by member countries as it would include financing plans for tiger conservation which Southeast Asian countries may use when implementing tiger conservation efforts. He said the population of tigers had plunged to fewer than 4,000 worldwide and this figure includes the critically endangered Malayan tiger, a symbol of Malaysia's strength and resilience which adorns its national coat of arms or Jata Negara. Now based on the first national tiger survey conducted from 2016 to 2020, he said fewer than 150 Malayan tigers were left in the wild, while experts predict that the species will vanish within five to ten years if strategic actions were not put in place immediately. Well, police have obtained a seven-day court order to prohibit demonstrations at Dasaran Merdeka, Sogo and Masjid Jami. Well, the move came following a planned demonstration tomorrow to demand action against Malaysian Anti-Corruption Commission Chief Commissioner Tansri Azam Baki. Well, according to Dang Wangi Police Chief ACP Nur Dilhan Yahya, until today, police have not received any information or contact from the organizers. Pinuzulan bin Mamadin, ketua bahagian memastikan keselamatan orang ramai dan keteraman awam termasuk konteks keselamatan daripada keselamatan awam daripada jangkitan ataupun penularan jangkitan COVID-19. Pihak polis yang akan menjalankan beberapa tindakan pematuhan dan penguatkuasaan SOP antaranya adalah lencongan jalan di sekitar kawasan pentadbiran Ibu Pejabat Polis Daerah Dawangi. So setakat ini sebanyak enam jalan, jalan utama ya, yang akan dibuat lencongan. Antaranya adalah Jalan Kucing, Jalan Kinabalu, Jalan Maharaja Lela, Jalan Hang Tuah, Jalan Imbi dan juga Jalan Sultan Ismail. He added that operations at 25 MRT, LRT, monorail and KTM stations within the Dangwangi area will also be temporarily seized from 7 a.m. While a total of 1,010 personnel will be deployed on the ground to ensure no untoward incidents occurred. ACP Noor Delhan also said so far police had recorded statements of 16 people, including five politicians, to assist in investigations into the rally. 
Well, the Transport Ministry will organize engagement sessions and discussions with the transport industry players in regard to their proposal to cap speed limits to 30 kilometers per hour on roads in urban and residential areas, cities and villages, and 50 for other zones. So Minister Dato Sri Dr. Wika Siong said the proposal requires thorough scrutiny and discussion before any decision can be made. Tapi kita lihat di Malaysia ini punca kemalangan sebenarnya mempunyai faktor yang pelbagai dan bukan saja berdasar kepada kelajuan. Kelajuan yang dikatakan daripada 50 kepada 30 sudah pastinya akan mendapat reaksi bercampur-campur. The minister also said that the ministry will take into consideration all the factors and study the proposal from every aspect to find the best solution. He said this in response to the proposal by the Malaysian Institute of Road Safety Research to have the speed limit for built-up zones such as urban and residential areas, cities and villages be capped at 30 kilometers per hour as part of the National Road Safety Plan for 2021-2030. It said the proposed lower speed limit would allow people to safely mix with road traffic and create a safer, healthier and more livable space. Authorities have received a total of 111 applications to date for the Malaysia My Second Home or MM2H program under the new policy and indication the program is still popular despite stricter conditions. The Home Minister Dato Sri Hamza Zainuddin said this figure was about the same as the average number of applications received under the old conditions. Speaking to reporters after launching the MM2H executive launch at the Immigration Department headquarters today, he said of the new applications, 12 principal applicants had been given conditional approval while another three are now successful MM2H participants. Daripada apa yang kita buktikan ini, kalau 111 orang ini kita lulus, immediately they will bring in at least minimum 1 million each. Daripada dulu, hanya kita berikan 300 ribu saja. That's the difference. Uh, jadi kalau hari ini kita dapat lulus ribu, tahun ini contohnya, tahun 2022, seribu. Kalau ikutkan average, every year we will get about 1,000. So with uh, that, we will get about 1B. We will touch 1B. Uh, itu yang kita nak, bezanya daripada dulu, hanya 300 juta. According to official records, there were 55,010 MM2H participants comprising both principal pass holders as well as their dependents. MM2H Executive Launch provides participants with services such as a dedicated place to pick up their passes and for them to seek advice from officials on the program. Well, more than 70 million ringgit has been allocated for repair of rural roads and implementation of social amenities programs or PAMS in states affected by the recent floods. Rural Development Minister Dato Sri Mazir Khalid said the amount included 37.2 million ringgit for repair of village roads, while 35 million ringgit was for PAMS nationwide. When met after presenting the Bantuan Pembelian Barangan Keperluan Asas or BPBKA assistance to flood victims in Port Dixon today, he said, as of 9th January, 356 applications for rural roads were received, which included for construction, upgrading and repair of facilities and infrastructure. He added that a total of 394 applications for PAMS were also received by the ministry, including in Orang Asli villages that were hit by the floods. On the BPBKA assistance, Dada Sri Mazir said the federal government had allocated 15.1 million ringgit for the purpose and 4.63 million ringgit in Bantuan Wang Isan of 1,000 ringgit each for flood victims. Itu dua tambahan lah untuk Kementerian Pembangunan Orang Bandar. Yang pertama itu lagi saya sudah sebut baik pulih rumah dan bina baru rumah. Yang kedua jalan dan yang ketiga adalah amenity social. So that kami di KPR buat tiga perkara. The rest tu di bawah uh, 
ICU yang bagi cash tu di bawah ICU Jabatan Perdana Menteri. Well, following the rising prices of raw materials, food traders are allowed to increase their selling prices as long as there is no element of profiteering. Now, Deputy Minister of Domestic Trade and Consumer Affairs, KPDN HEP, Dato Rosal Wahid, said there were complaints and grievances from traders who said the prices of food items had to be increased as the costs of raw materials today have skyrocketed. <laughs> Kau tak faham, peniaga memang beli peniaga nak untung, betul tak eh? Nak untung, ha? jadi takkan nak ugi, tapi jangan terlampau. Jika ada macam itu, nanti beri kesatuan usaha di bawah pasukan undang-undang kita. The deputy minister added that the ministry wants traders to do business ethically to prevent consumers to be deceived. He said this after reviewing the implementation and compliance of the Keluarga Malaysia Maximum Price Scheme or SHMKM at the Stutong Community Market in Kuching, Sarawak, which began on 7 December last year and ends on 4 February this year. Meanwhile, on the problem of rising prices of chicken that is expected to be solved once SHMKM ends, Dr. Rosal said KPDN HEP and the Agriculture and Food Industries Ministry or MAFI have issued over 20 approved permits to balance prices in the market. With regard to SHMKM, he said the government will re-evaluate the prices of goods as well as inflation based on input from the Department of Statistics, Finance Ministry and MAFI before deciding on whether or not to extend the scheme. Well, Malaysia is poised to be the 12th Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership, or RCEP, signatory to implement the agreement after the Instrument of Ratification, or IOR, was submitted to the ASEAN Secretariat on 17 January this year. Well, the RCEP agreement will be a key enabler for Malaysia in revitalizing the domestic and international business activities in a post-pandemic world. Now, the International Trade and Industry Ministry, METI, in a statement released today, said the pandemic has underscored the paramount importance of international trade and cooperation as well as the interlinkages of regional supply chains. Now, the statement also said business communities from large to small-scale entrepreneurs are encouraged to take advantage of the vast investment opportunities and greater participation in regional and global value chains presented by this mega trade agreement. The largest free trade agreement in the world will enter into force for Malaysia on 18th March this year, where Malaysia will join 11 other signatory countries, namely Singapore, China, Japan, Brunei, Cambodia, Laos, Thailand, Vietnam, Australia, New Zealand and South Korea that have completed the ratification process. Well, Miti said within ASEAN, Malaysia is expected to be the largest beneficiary of the RCEP agreement in terms of gains and exports with a projected 200 million US dollar increase. The rising inflation rate is a global phenomenon caused by supply chain disruptions and rising energy costs. Well, Minister, the Prime Minister's Department for Economy, Dato Sri Mustafa Mohammed, said according to the Department of Statistics, Malaysia, or DOSM, Malaysia's inflation rate rose by 3.2% to 124.5 in December 2021 from 1206 in December 2020. Well, elaborating further on the matter in a statement released, Dato Sri Mustafa said the government is aware that the rise in the inflation rate has affected the cost of living of Malaysian families, especially the low-income ones. Well, he said various initiatives are being implemented by the government in addressing the issue of inflation and rising prices of basic necessities to ease the burden of Keluarga Malaysia members. The initiatives include the allocation of 31 billion ringgit in the form of subsidies under Budget 2022. The minister also said this includes providing subsidies for the raw 95 petrol and diesel, as well as for cooking oil and flour, as well as the allocation of 200 million ringgit to lower the prices of essential goods in the villages. Dr. Sri Mustafa also stressed that the government will always monitor the prices of goods, especially food items, and will take steps to avoid unreasonable increases in prices thus easing the people's burden as a whole. 
In its quest to boost exports, the Malaysia External Trade Development Corporation, or MaTrade, has outlined 286 exporters' development and export promotion programs for 2022. Now, the programs were devised based on the strategic directions of the National Trade Blueprint, or NTBP, with greater emphasis on digitalization and sustainability. Well, MaTrade Chief Executive Officer Mohamed Mustafa Abdul Aziz said Malaysian companies seeking to expand their business abroad ought to be prepared and are encouraged to engage with MaTrade for the various support and promotion programs they can avail themselves to. Well, he also said that MaTrade has outlined export promotion programs comprising iconic trade fairs, export acceleration missions or EAM, and international sourcing programs or INSP in conjunction with major international trade events. The 18th edition of the Malaysia International Halal Showcase or MIHAS will also take place in a hybrid format in September 2022, reaffirming its foothold to hold a global congregation of halal players to further strengthen its stature as the world's largest halal trade fair. Martrade supports Malaysian companies by providing facilitation and assistance to be global champions through wide-ranging exporters development programs. Now these comprise exporters training activities with prominence in areas such as market access, trade guidelines, financing and branding, encompassing digitalization and sustainability initiatives. Johor police arrested 220 men, including three foreigners believed to be drug dealers and addicts during an anti-drug operation dubbed Optapis at Kampung Melayu Pandan, Johor Bahru, early today. While speaking at a press conference, Johor Police Chief Dato Kamarul Zaman Mamad said all suspects aged between 21 and 45 and most of them worked as security guards, construction workers, wholesale market workers, fishmongers and vegetable sellers. He said the operation was focused on the area as it was identified as one of the 12 hotspots for drug distribution and sale among the addicts. He added that investigations are ongoing to identify the types and sources of their drug supplies. He also said that all of them will be screened for HIV and COVID-19 before being taken to the lockup for further investigations. The Pulau Pinang Department of Environment, or DOE, has opened two investigation papers against the management of the Pulau Burong landfill in Jalan Beram to relation of the fire at the site since 12 January. Its director, Sharifah Zakia Said Sahab, said, apart from investigating the incident, the department is also monitoring air pollution in the area. When met today, she said investigation against the management company of the Pulau Burong landfill was conducted under Section 29A and Section 34A of the Environmental Quality Act 1974, which is for open burning and its compliance with the Environmental Impact Assessment, or EIA, respectively. The Pulau Burong landfill was declared a Level 1 disaster area based on the National Security Council, or MKN's, directive after the fire there polluted the surrounding area and posed a risk to health. The 16.19 hectare landfill was reported to have caught fire at 5 p.m. last Wednesday and it had yet to be completely extinguished until today. And according to Sharif Zakia, this was not the first time the DOE had taken action against PLB Tarang Sundirian Burhad, which is the company that managed the landfill. Well, she said the DOE had issued 14 notices to the company and apart from that, it has also issued two compounds against the company for open burning. Sports, South Korean Kim Pan Gong is due to Harimau Malaya head coach. And it's time for our Sports Corner. Now, the Football Association of Malaysia, FEM, have appointed former Korean Football Association team director Kim Pan Gon as the new Harimau Malaya head coach, replacing Tan Cheng Ho. Well, FEM President Dajo Hamidin Mohamed Amin said the 52-year-old coach will report for duty in mid-February and has been offered a two-year contract with a two-year extension. Antara beberapa kategori kita lihat adalah pertama, 
Tentang understanding dia tentang Malaysian football Mana tentang players kita Itu pertama Kedua Definitely dia masa pro license With certain standard Dia pernah manage uh, national team sebelum Mana-mana negara uh, International networking Datu Hamidin said Pan Gon, who is the first coach from South Korea to be appointed to the position since 1963, would bring four of his own coaching staff comprising an assistant coach, fitness coach, goalkeeping coach and an analyst. Pan Gon, who used to play for club sides Ulsan Hyundai and Yeonbuk Hyundai Motors in South Korea in the 1990s, began his coaching career as assistant coach of Busan Ipok FC from 2005 to 2008. He replaces Cheng Ho, who resigned from the post on 2nd January by taking full responsibility for the Harimau Malaya's decimal performance in the 2020 ASEAN Football Federation or AFF Cup in Singapore, where they failed to advance to the semi-finals. Well, that concludes this evening's News at 10. In our top story, roads diverge as rallies banned in capital for seven days. Join us again at 12.30 tomorrow afternoon. I'm Mohamed Aman Carlos. Stay tuned to Saloran Berita RTM and have a pleasant evening.